Hey guys, Coach Jim Lubinsky here with Tower 26 Triathlon Coaching. Today I'm going to give you a race overview of Ironman California, which is happening this Sunday, October 24th, 2021. So we'll go over some things to keep in mind, some things that are going to help you get to the finish line as quick as possible, as healthy as possible, feeling good and ready for that post-race party. So I put together a keynote presentation here that I will share with you guys to go over the key points that I want to focus on. So I will share that screen and then we will get right into it. So Ironman California, like I said, happening this Sunday, October 24th, we are Tower 26 bringing you this presentation. If you guys have any questions throughout this presentation, make sure you guys write in the comments on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you're seeing it, we will see it. And one of our, our Tower 26 triathlon coaches will get back to you. Quickly, let's go over a race day checklist. And remember, as you're watching this, you can always go back to this, slow it down or pause on these screens so you can write down this checklist if you don't have it. Try shorts, uh, swimsuit, tri suit, something you're gonna wear under your wetsuit. You will be wearing wetsuits out there. It's 65 in the low mid to mid 60 water temperature. So you're gonna wanna bring your wetsuit and you're gonna remember to wear something under that wetsuit, tri suit, swimsuit, tri shorts. There's no nudity allowed in transition and there are no changing tents in this race. So you guys are gonna to wanna, to, you're gonna to have to change at your bike. So that means if you went nude under your wetsuit, you'd have some, pro you'd have some problems with the no nudity clause. So make sure you wear something under that wetsuit and you can always change in transition, but you just need to put a towel around you to change or go into an outhouse in transition. Two sets of goggles. You might have a sunny day, you might have a foggy day, be ready with a clear set of goggles and a tinted goggle, brightly colored towel, something that you, what you can dry off with if need be coming out of the water, wetsuit, Vaseline, put on any of those hot spots that might have a little chafing around your neck, on your cheeks, on your armpits, anywhere that might chafe with that wetsuit, AMP PR lotion, something to help you buffer any lactate. So that's something that I recommend to all my Tower 26 triathlon athletes. Bike, remember your bike, your helmet, your cycling shoes, your socks. If you wear them in training, wear your socks and racing. Warm clothes, you can have some lower temperatures, which we'll go over, we'll go over in a little bit. So you're going to want to bring some warm clothes to put on before you get on that bike. So socks, cycling jacket, arm warmers, gloves, maybe a skull cap, sunglasses. You want to be prepared with sunglasses. It might get sunny out there, even though it's raining. Who knows? You got to be prepared for any situation that presents itself. Make sure you have your water bottles, all that nutrition that you're going to need throughout the course of the race, which we'll cover in a little bit. Your flat kit, there will be uh, aid, on course aid on the bike, but you want to be re ready to change a flat tire if need be. You, who knows how far in between the aid mobiles will be to come help you out change a flat. So know how to change a flat and have all the equipment with you if need be. And a pump, make sure you have a pump with you on race weekend. You don't want to bring the pump to the race because there's nowhere to put it and they can't guarantee that that will, that will make it back to the race finish so you can get it post-race. So a pump to fill up those tires before you drop it off and transition and then transition more in it race morning in transition. You can just top off those tires if need be. Run, you're going to need to have your running shoes. Make sure you have uh, two pairs of running shoes. You're going to have to wear one to the to the race start as well as one in transition to wear in your race. Dry clothes in your running bag in case you need to change from the bike to the run. You get off that bike and you're super wet. It might be a nice idea to have a nice dry set of clothes in that run bag. But also you're going to need a, a towel as well in there to put around your waist or to put around your midsection to keep that nudity clause in order. So bring a towel, bring a dry set of clothes, and it feels nice to come out of T2 in a dry set of clothes. You're going to want a race belt to put that race number on, a hat or visor, especially if it's going to be raising, raining out there. It's nice to have that protection over your face, kind of the, to shield yourself from some of that rain. And then you're going to have all that nutrition that you are going to need and make sure you have the electrolytes as well, which comes in the form of salt, something like base salt. Miscellaneous things that you might need throughout the day, your training device, your Garmin, your Timex, a heart rate strap, body glide, like we spoke about, Vaseline, sunscreen, you might not need it based on that weather, but just be prepared to have it in that transition bag in case the weather changes and you will have some sun out there. So be ready with the sunscreen, electrical tape, things that you can fix the bike or tape down anything that might be a little bit loose on race morning 
or the weekend of the race, a little small multi-sport to or a multi-tool that can help you fix things or tighten things up if need be. Warm change of clothes for after the race. So that'll be in your transition bag when you pick up it after the race. Make sure you have something to change into so you're not freezing there in the mid-50 degree weather of Sacramento. And the post-race recovery drink, something that will give you some good protein and carbohydrates so you can start on that protein right as you cross that finish line. Athlete check-in, which is happening Thursday the 21st, Friday the 22nd. You have to check in as an athlete either Thursday or Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Thursday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Friday. You cannot check in on Saturday. Saturday, you'll be checking your bike at transition number one. But other than that, you will be all checked in from nine to five Thursday or Friday. You guys should have received a check-in email so you could sign up for your specific check-in time. You also got a QR code email and you're gonna need that QR code when you go to check-in. So take a screenshot of it so it's saved and you don't have to pull up that email. Just take a screenshot of the QR code right now, bring it to check-in and they're gonna be scanning that a couple times throughout check-in. Athlete briefings are happening throughout the day, Thursday and Friday. So make sure you attend one of those. They always give you last minute tips, things to remember. So I'm going to give you a ton of tips here and a ton of reminders, but the race director there is going to give you all the last minute info that you will need regarding buses, regarding scheduling, regarding special needs, regarding course, uh, course direction, course semantics. So go to one of those athlete brief briefings at the Ironman Village, pay attention to timing. All this schedule is also in your athlete uh, guide. So make sure you pay attention to that. 10 to 4 Saturday, you have to check your bike in. You should have received an email where you designate a time you're going to check that bike in. So make sure you pay attention to that and get that bike checked in 10 to 4 on Saturday at T num T transition number one. These are your special needs bags, guys. Many of you guys have seen these before. Many of you may not have seen it before. Let me move my uh, little head around here real quick so I'm not in the way. And many of you may have seen them, may not have seen them before. So the white bag is your morning clothes bag. So you're going to get on the bus in your morning clothes. You don't have to strip down to your wetsuit when you get on the bus to go to the swim start. You're going to meet at the baseball field and get on those shuttle buses taking a swim start. You'll be wearing all your morning clothes bag. When you're when you strip down and you get into that wetsuit, you put all the clothes you're wearing in that morning clothes bag and you're going to drop it off at the swim start. This will be ready for you at the, at the finish of the race for you to pick up. But you put everything in there and you can put your wetsuit goggles and all that in this until you put it on and then you just switch it out. You put on the wetsuit goggles hat and you put everything you're wearing into the white bag. Drop that off at the swim start. You also have your bike bag. You're going to have all your bike gear in that bike bag, helmet, shoes, socks, sunglasses, anything, any warm gear you might be wearing because you're in, like I said, it's in the mid fifties to start. You're going to be coming out of the water, might have some wind. You're going to be wet. So make sure you're prepared with some warm clothes. This will be at your bike in T1. So you'll just drop it off there before you go to the swim start. Then you have your run gear bag that you're going to drop off at in transition number two before you get on the shuttle bus. So you're going to put everything you need in that run, red run gear bag. The bike personal needs and the run personal needs bags, that's what you're going to put in. And you're going to get those around halfway through the bike and halfway through the run. Check out the course map and you'll see exactly where you get the special needs bags. And what you put in there, guys, anything you need for the back half of those courses. So you don't have to front end load your bike with all that nutrition that you need. You can put half the nutrition on your bike for the first half and then put the other half in that special needs. As you come through to the special needs station on the bike, you will see a ton of volunteers out there. You come to a stop, they'll hand you your bag. You just switch out everything you need with that, uh, with the second half of the bike needs. Same thing with the run. You'll come through transit. You'll come through the special needs area. There'll be a a volunteer there handing you your special needs bag. You could switch out anything you need to switch out, grab anything you need out of that bag, and then carry on along your way. Don't be hasty, guys. Don't, don't just scream through, say, where's my bag, where's my bag, and then skip it. This is vital. You might take an extra 30 seconds to get everything that you need out of your bag. Stop, get it down, stay nice and calm, and then get it back into your groove on the bike and in the run. But if you skip right through it, miss all that nutrition you need because you're being hasty, that's going to cause you 30 minutes, an hour at the end of the race because you're limping through the end of the race because you didn't get in the nutrition you need. Remember, you will not get anything back that you leave in that bag. So don't put anything expensive in those special needs bags. 
uh, shoes, jackets, Rolex, anything you might put in there, you're not going to get back after the race. So just put some nutrition in there, things that you don't care about, but if you don't take it all, you're not going to get it back. So just keep that in mind. Saturday, day before the race, make sure you wake up, get a carb heavy breakfast, eggs, toast, oatmeal, fruit, yogurt, get in some light training, nothing too crazy. The work is done, the haze in the barn, just something to actually just done to calm your nerves, get a little bit of movement in those legs, but make sure you pack up your run gear, bag, socks, hat, visor, think about it all, get it in there, get it done early so you don't have to think about it later in the day. Drop off your bike at your specified time. Make sure you walk your butt, walk the the route you're going to take from the swim in to your bike and then your bike to the bike out so you know exactly how you're going to run or jog or walk gingerly through that transition area and it's not a question on race day had the transition at your time drop your bike off also you can find a stable marker something that's not going to move that's in alignment with your bike so a outhouse a tree a, a fence post something that's not going to move that you can identify with your bikes when you're running in from that swim and there's 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 bikes, you know exactly which row your bike is in by that stable marker. Get home, get off your feet early. Don't go stroll around the, uh, the expo. Don't go out to eat, walk in five, six, seven miles to the, to the dinner location. Just get off your feet, relax. You guys have trained hard for this. Treat it with the respect it deserves. You need all that energy you're going to need on Sunday. So get off those feet early and get to relaxation. Eat dinner on the early side, 5 30, 6 p.m. Don't overhydrate. Don't be pounding water all day. Stay on top of those electrolytes. Make sure you eat a balanced dinner, carb, protein, vegetables. A lot of people say, don't eat salad the night before a race. Guys, you're gonna have plenty of uh you're gonna have you're gonna have plenty of time in the morning to go number two. And that vegetables, those vegetables, those salads are gonna help you help work through that the night before if you're taking it in the night before the race. So eat the vegetables, eat the salad, carb, protein, make sure you stay on your salt and electrolytes all day long, adds extra salt to your food, sip on electrolyte drink all day Saturday. Don't just drink straight water. We don't should be hypernitremic. That's where you have too much water in the system, not enough electrolytes. So keep taking those electrolytes all day long. And like I said earlier, shut it down early. Even if you can't sleep, just lay there, relax, and don't turn any screens on. You will sleep. You just need to get into that groove and just let your body rest. Sunday race day, wake up around 4 a.m. You want to eat about two and a half hours before your race start. Eat easily digested carbohydrates, for example, oatmeal, scoop of jam, scoop of nut butter. Bring a banana to, with you, to eat with you on that bus on the way to the swim start. Sip on those electrolytes right from the moment you wake up. You're not chugging electrolyte, electrolytes. You're just sipping on a, a sport drink that has those electrolytes in it. Make sure you get out the door early so you're not rushing, guys. 5, 5 15 a.m., head down to that shuttle bus so you can drop your run gear off, have plenty of time to get on the bus, get to the swim start. And even if you're there early, great, guys. It's time, extra time to go for a little jog, warm up, and just get settled. The, the shuttles are leaving from the baseball stadium from 5 to 6.30 a.m. So there are con constant flow of shuttles heading to the swim start. Once you get to the race venue, make sure you check out those porta potties. Make sure you have air in your tires and, uh, and get that wetsuit on and get ready to get warmed up and rock that course. Pre race for protocol after you, like I said earlier, once you go number two, fill in those tires, go to 10 to 15 minute easy jog before you get in line to line up for swim start, guys. Put on your wetsuit, put on the Vaseline, put on your cap and goggles once you return from that jog. There's not a swim warm up. So if you have some stretch cords, you can put on those, bring those stretch cords with you and make sure you put them in the morning bag before you drop it off at the truck. But hit those stretch cords. So you're warming up those swim muscles. It's a rolling start starting at 6 50 a.m. So line up accordingly with your predicted swim finish time and be realistic, guys. Don't be antsy jumping up. If you're an hour and a half, be realistic with an hour and a half. Don't jump up to an hour because all that's going to happen is people are going to swim over you and you are going to get flustered. So be realistic with that predicted swim finish time. And if you're faster, so be it. You're faster. Swim course, 2.4 mile point to point swim. You're starting in the American River about a quarter of the way through. Third of the way through, you merge with the Sacramento River. Water temps is in around 65 today, and I don't see it going any higher than that. So be ready with those wetsuits. The current increases when you move from when the American River and the Sacramento river merge so be ready for a little kick in current as those two rivers merge you get a slight current in the american river but when they come together you get an even bigger court current 
The buoys will be the yellow sighting buoys. So yellow or orange, not too sure. It's usually first half is one color, second half is another color. And you can just sight off those buoys. You can, there's no turn buoys. So you're not worried about turning around any of those buoys. You can swim right or left of those buoys, whichever side you think you're going to get the most benefit from that current. So that's something you want to check out when you rock, drop your bike off on Saturday, which, where's the current flowing and where are you going to find the most advantage from that current? And to be honest, the race director, the swim director usually puts the buoys where the current is the strongest. So it's usually the best to stay tight to those buoys. Swim notes, it's rolling start. Like I said, choose your position accordingly. If you want to enjoy the fray, you can be on a little bit of the outside of the course to start. It will, it will thin out guys. So if it's all congested in the first two, three, 400 meters, don't worry about it. It will string out. Just stay, stay relaxed and stay focused on your swim. Stay calm. If you start to get bumped, if you start to get hit, you start to hyperventilate, don't freak out. Just relax, guys. Just get on your back, float. You will float with the wetsuit and with the current of the river. It's kind of like a lazy river. So just relax and don't get all flustered if you start to hyperventilate. Your race isn't over five minutes in because you lose your breath. Just relax and let that breath come back to you. Stick as close to the buoys as you can. Like I said, usually that's where the best current is located. Water's going to be cold. If you can splash any on your face, get it down your wetsuit before the start of the race. It's going to be tough to do, but it might be a good idea to try and do that just to, just to clear that ice cream headache. But because you're jumping in and you're going to have that constriction in the chest, it's going to be cold water. It's, it's paramount that you breathe. Don't hold that breath and just relax, guys. Start out controlled, find the rhythm. It's 2.4 miles. It's a long way to swim. Nothing's going to happen in the first 200 meters. So build into your swim stroke, build into your Ironman race pace effort, which should be around that 70 to 75% effort where you're nice and relaxed and nice, long, smooth strokes. With the current, the smoother and the more efficient you can swim, the more you're going to benefit from the current. If you're taking fast, choppy strokes, that's going to hinder you with the push of that current. So keep it relaxed, keep it long and keep it efficient. If you need help from the lifeguards, just put your arms up. Lifeguards will have boards. They will have flotation devices. As long as the lifeguard isn't helping you move forward, you can rest on their flotation device as long as needed. But if needed, be plenty of lifeguards out there helping out if you need their help. Remember, we do have our swim subscription plan. It's suited to meet the needs of the triathlon swimmer. All workouts are scaled to your ability level. Weekly workouts consist of two A sessions, one B session, one C session. Each workout has detailed workout notes, including audio and video, video instruction. Our technical phase of training is starting November 1st. So it's starting next week, guys. So that's a great time to get in on our swim subscription plan. Anywhere in the world, we have subscribers all over the world. So they're all swimming the exact same workouts that we swim in Pacific Palisades in Southern California here with Tower 26. They're suited to the needs of the triathlon swimmer. And each athlete assigned a, tower, assigned a Tower 26 coach who will pro provide feedback on each of the completed sessions. So go to coaching.tower26.com and start in November to lay the foundation for your 2022 swimming. Transition number one at California, at Ironman California, you got to make it snappy, but don't be hasty with it, guys. I always say transition is free time. So don't just sit around in there. Mike Riley, the day after the race at the post-race parties, always says the person, the people who have the longest transitions, don't be that person, guys. Get out, get moving, especially if it's cold. The quicker you can get moving on the bike, the quicker that core temperature is going to go up and the less likely you are to let that hypothermia stay kick in. So get through transition, make it snappy. Don't be hasty. Don't let that heart rate stay up. Don't be rushing around like a maniac. Think things through, but move guys, get through, start getting that core temperature on the bike up as soon as you can. As you run through transition, pull your wetsuit down, run to your bike, identify where, bike, where your bike is by that stable marker we found on Saturday. When you set your bike up, everything comes out of your bag. Swim gear goes into the bag because that's going to meet you after the race with your morning clothes bag. So make sure you put, you put everything that you take off into the blue bag, leave that at your bike, put everything on that's in the bag, and then head out of transition. If you need socks on the bike, don't think, you don't even think about wear the socks. If you're training with socks, wear socks. You don't want to blister the ruin your day because you're hasty. You don't take the time to put on those socks. A, blue, a blister could ruin that run day. So make sure you do what you're doing in training, do exactly what you're doing in training. Run your bike to the mountain line. It's run right on the outside of the bike out area. 
you can't get on, you cannot get on your bike and ride it from your transition rack. You grab your bike, run to the run out. There's a little line on, there's a line on the ground outside of the bike out banner, run to the other side of that line. That's where you can get on your bike. And that's where your run leg, your bike legs begins. There are no changing tents. Remember everything's done at your bike. No nudity. Here's the weather for the day, guys. Move my head around here again. Weather for the day, predicted weather for Sunday is, thanks to JP Body for this weather forecast, he sent it over. Mid 50s all day long, looks like there's rain, 60% chance of rain, 88% chance of humidity. Bring plenty of warm clothes to put in transition, dry clothes to put in T number two. Move quickly through the transitions. Like I said, stay on your calories and hydration. A lot of times when it's raining, when it's cold, athletes forget to take in those calories on the same schedule that they would be taking in on any other day. Stay on that same schedule, especially when it's cold, your body burns more calories because you're trying, it's trying to stay warm. So if anything, you need to up those calories. If you're taking a gel every 30 minutes, take one every 20 minutes instead. If you stay drinking your electrolytes every 10 minutes, sip on those electrolytes every five minutes. You need to stay on top of those calories. You need to stay on top of those electrolytes. And what, if it is raining out, make sure you're taking those turns cautiously. Stay away from the painted areas of the road if you can. Those are a little more slippery in the rain. And enjoy the ride, guys. It's actually fun to race in the rain once you get the groove. But just always be cautious out there. Bike course, 112 miles, 710 feet of elevation over the course of 112 miles, guys. You won't find a much flatter course than Ironman California. So it's going to be a steady effort ride out there. Let's just make sure that you stay on those pedals all the time, guys, because um, it is tough on a flatter course to keep that consistent effort up because there's no undulation. There's nowhere to engage other muscles. So stay on the pedals, stay engaged, break it down in the five mile segments, run, ride five miles to five miles, break it down in the 15 minute segments. However you have to do it. Don't look at, at, look at it as 112 miles. Just look at it as 15 minutes as, at a time or five miles at a time. Just ride five miles to five miles, ride marker to marker. You have aid stations approximately every 12 miles. You're going to have water, Gatorade, gels, nutrition, such as bananas, pretzels, chips. And they're going to have a two times through for your hydration. So they'll have water, then they'll have Gatorade, then they'll have your nutrition, such as the gels and the bananas. Then they're going to have Gatorade, then they'll finish with water again. So you can grab the first water, sip on it, dump it over your head get the, all the nutrition you need. And then you can grab the red, the next, the last water again, to take on your bike to sip until the next 12 miles hits, be safe, be always aware of your surroundings, always ride to the right. If you're going to pass, look over your left shoulder, pass the athlete, and then move right when it's safe to do so. Don't even think of cutoff times, guys, race your race and stay present. I don't want you just subtracting and thinking, oh my gosh, I'm not going to make the cutoff time. That's never a recipe for success. Think of your race, think of your parameters that you set in, your metrics that you set before the race and race your race. As long as you do that, everything will come and you'll have a great day out there. Bike course notes, make sure you're holding 70 to 75% of your effort, whether that's power, heart rate, perceived effort, however you've, you've raced, don't overcook it. Just because you're taking it out in the first 10 miles of the bike and you feel great, don't go outside of those parameters. It's 112 miles. If you take it out too strong, you're going to limp over the finish line. You stay within yourself and train as a, and race as if you've been training, you're going to have a great day out there. Make sure you're keeping comfortable cadence the whole way through, never to grind too low in the seventies, never spin too high in the nineties. You want to be right in that 80 to 90 range, nice, fluid, efficient, strong pedal stroke, even paced rides lead to the best runs. Like I said earlier, you don't want to just Pin it at the start and limp to the finish. Keep it nice and even and smooth. And that's 70, 75% the entire way through. As I was saying, stay present and focused on the process. Breaking it down into little chunks helps you do that. And a course like this, where there's not too much climbing, stay arrow as much as possible. Occasionally have to stand on the pedals, the stretch. That's a good place to do it. A good place to do that is coming out of the turns. If you're riding into a headwind, which it has the potential to be windy, headwind, tailwind, you want to ride on the, on the higher end of that power heart rate range into the headwind. So you want to be on the higher end of that range into the headwind, and you want to stay on the lower end of the range into the tailwind. So push a bigger gear with the tailwind 
So that means you shift down and keep the cadence on the lower side with a tailwind, keep the cadence nice and smooth on the higher side into the headwind. So push a bigger power number, bigger heart rate, bigger effort within your ability level, within your range into the headwind and stay on the lower end with the tailwind. Break your distance down. Like I said, if you have to pee on your ride, you can pee while you're riding if you're used to that. And that's between us. And if you're not, don't try to do it. There's outhouses at every aid station, every 12 miles. Stop and go pee, guys. If you got to go, you got to go. That's better than suffering, pinching it, and uh, and that cutting into your mindset than, than just stopping and letting it go. So if you got to go, you got to go. Like I said, stay on your nutrition, then tie your way through. Take a gel every 20 to 25 minutes and con constantly hydrate with those electrolytes. Shoot for one bottle of hydration per hour. Transition number, transition number two, carefully dismount the dismount line, run your bike to your bike rack, get to that bike rack, rack your bike, take all the gear out of your run bag, sit down, put on those shoes, put on those socks. If you're going to change, make sure you have it laid out the way you're going to lay it out and change with that towel around your waist. And then as you're running out of transition, you can put on that hat, sunglasses, race belt, and get that nutrition all the nutrition that you're taking with you settled into your, you know, into your pockets that you're going to do, but you don't have to stand there and put all that stuff on. You can be moving towards the run out as you're putting on your hat, sunglasses, race belt, et cetera. Make it snappy and not hasty. Once again, remember fast transition equals free time. Run course, 26.2 miles, only 306 feet of elevation. Another nice flat course for you to run every aid stations, every 1.1 to 1.2 miles. On the back half of the course, that's where you find two loops. So the front half of the course, you're just going to run out, turn around, come back. And then the back half of the course, you'll double loop the back half of the course. So pay attention to that bike, that run course, pay attention to the turns and pay attention to all the signage. So you do the right, the right turnaround where the turnaround is. Take it one mile at a time, guys. Don't take it as 26.2 miles. Run one mile to two mile, second mile to third mile, third mile to fourth mile. If you start mile one and you're like, oh God, I have 25 miles left of this. It's going to be a long run. Just take it one mile at a time, stay on your nutrition, no matter the weather. Same thing. Gel every 20 to 25, sipping on electrolytes and water every aid station. At the beginning of the run, focus on finding your rhythm. Don't be in too much of a rush to get onto that race pace. Use that first 10 to 20 minutes to find the rhythm. Let those heavy legs loosen up. Eventually, you will find that run pace. Just be patient with it. That your legs will come to you. Like I said, take it one mile at a time and race your race. Stay present. Stay mindful. The bad wolf will be piping up. Ironman racing is 90% mental, 10% physical. If you let your mind beat you, it's going to be a long day. You hear that bad wolf start saying, stop running. You, you're, you're tired. You're sore. You're fatigued. It's time to back off. Turn it off by focusing on the present, focus on, focusing on the process, focusing on, focusing on your technique. Don't let that bad wolf beat you. We have our Tower 26 Triathlon Training Program. If you guys haven't heard of this, it is another option that you have in training with Tower 26. It is uh, It attracts athletes from all over the world. We, we give you all of your swim, bike, run workouts. We have two live virtually coached bike workouts every week, one live virtually coached run workout per week, and we have two to three detailed swim workouts per week. So it provides everything you need. We have weekly office hours with Tower 26 coaches every Tuesday, 2 p.m. Pacific time. Technical phase also starts November 1st, so it's a good time to get in and set that foundation for your 2022 season. That's at training.tower26.com. If you guys want one place that you can find all these links, go to tower26.com. Nutrition. Remember, the nutrition is a huge part of the race, guys. It is the fourth discipline. So you can swim, bike, and run all day long, but if your nutrition is not on point, you are going to have a long day out there. So let's make sure we touch on that nutrition before I let you go here. Saturday, along with carb-dominated nutrition all day, make sure you stay on top of that salt intake. Race morning, like I said earlier, 2.5, two and a half hours before the for your race start, make sure you get on a breakfast containing fat carbohydrates, sip on your electrolytes all morning long. Race nutrition, 30 minutes before your swim start, take a gel, wash it down with water. Bike, make sure you get on, get moving, get settled in. Then you can start getting into your nutrition routine. Every 20 to 25 minutes, you're taking a gel, washing it down with straight water, dripping on an electrolyte drink, sipping on an electrolyte drink every five to 10 minutes. 
Make sure you stay on that hot on that. Sorry, make sure you're staying on that straight water as well, guys, because we need to keep the concentration in that belly evened out. A lot of times, if you're taking a gel with a, a sweet carbohydrate drink, you're getting a little too concentrated in that stomach. So make sure you're drinking straight water as well. And that's a good thing to take at the aid stations. Same with the run. Make sure you stay on top of that nutrition. Every 20 to 25 minutes, you're taking a gel, drinking water and electrolyte drink at every aid station. Like I said, that's every tw- every one to 1.2 miles. If you guys have questions on anything on the course, we will get back to you ASAP, right at where you're seeing this video, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, anywhere else. We will get that information. We will get the information back to you accordingly. So ask away and we will answer those questions. We want you going into race day, ready to rock guys. Number one thing out there, make sure you are having fun. You're smiling every mile and you real you realize that once this is over guys, it's over and you got to wait a long time to do it again. So enjoy it. Enjoy that finish line. Stay present, stay focused. And, um, you're gonna have a great day out there guys. Coach Jim tower 26. I'll talk to you soon. And I'll see you out there on race day. Bye guys.